SQL 2008 R2 cluster. Okay, I'm going to start in Failover Cluster Manager where I've got two nodes added to the cluster. Just a quick look at the disk configuration on each node in the cluster. I have matched drive letters and drive capacities um, approximately on SQL node 1 and SQL node 2. In Failover Cluster Manager, I currently have no storage available for the cluster. I need to create a GeoCluster replicated disk, which involves installing double take availability on each node in the cluster, creating an empty resource, and creating a resource called GeoCluster replicated disk. I need to configure the GeoCluster replicated disk by selecting the disk, choosing the properties, configure a resource name, Configure mirror properties, make sure block checksum is enabled for a database replication set and delete orphans. Choose a drive to replicate and flip OK. Finally, bring the resource online. I'm going to very quickly create another GeoCluster replicated disk. Moving through the uh, creation of the GeoCluster replicated disks very quickly, I have covered the creation of GeoCluster replicated disks in more detail in an earlier recording. This time I'm going to call it H colon logs one. It's going to be the logs disk for my first SQL cluster. Actually, going to rename my first GeoCluster replicated disk um, to be E colon data for data for my first GeoCluster SQL instance. I can now bring both my GeoCluster disks online and finally I can delete the new service or application that I created. The Two GeoCluster replicated disks will be returned to the available storage pool. Now that we have available storage in the cluster, we can start the uh, SQL cluster installation process. I'm now connected to SQL node 2. I'm just going to run through the SQL Server 2008 R2 setup. The setup takes a good 10-15 minutes, so I'm going to uh, time lapse the whole process. Note that only the database, engine services and analysis service can be configured for a cluster. I'm going to choose a SQL Server network name. This will eventually become my cluster resource name. So I'm going to use SQL Server 1. Here I could choose a, an existing cluster resource group or just accept the default. Again, I can choose which disks I want to be involved in my cluster. I'm going to choose both my E drive and my H drive, my, both my GeoCluster replicated disks, and just label them data and logs accordingly. I'm going to specify an IP address. Um, on my local subnet, I could use DHCP, but I'm going to use a specified fixed IP address. I'm also going to choose a domain account for the SQL service to run under. need to specify my SQL authentication mode and also directories that I wish to use for database locations and log file locations. So I'm changing my log file location to be on the H drive for both the temp DB and the user DBs. Okay, the rest of the installation is very, very straightforward. So I'm going to skip right until the end of the install. Okay, so SQL is now installed on the first node in the cluster. The bad news is I need to do the whole process for every other node in the cluster. Okay, I am now on the second node in the cluster. Just to show you the slight difference, I'm now going to specify add node to a SQL server fail of a cluster. This will give me the opportunity to add this new node into an existing cluster. I'll skip ahead till the installation is complete. Okay, so SQL Server is installed on each node in the cluster and I'm now ready to do some failover testing. 
Okay, now this is in real time. I'm going to right click on the SQL Server and specify move to another node. And we'll see the actual uh, SQL Server going offline, gracefully shutting down the SQL services on the active node, which was SQL node 2. And then we'll see the resources restarting on SQL node 1. The failover duration really is the length of time it takes for the SQL services to start. Bear in mind I have now changed the double take GeoCustom replicated disks offline pending duration down to three seconds. You can see the final stage is for the GeoCustom replicated disk to re-establish the connection from the new active node, which is SQL node 1, back to SQL node 2. The replication syncs in the opposite direction. I'm now going to conduct a real failure of the cluster active node. First of all, I'll just set up a continuous ping that we can observe on the screen. Then I'm going to connect to SQL Server Management Studio, connect to the SQL cluster, select databases. I'm just going to right click and create a new database. I'm going to call it demo failover. I'm going to just go into my database. I'm going to create a new database table. Add a few columns. Now these database changes won't be committed to disk until we actually save them. So before I do that, I'm just going to open up the management console for SQL node 1. It is a Hyper-V virtual machine. Make one more change to the table. Um, close the uh, SQL Server Management Studio, which will save the database and immediately turn off the active node in the cluster. We can see the SQL node 1 is turned off and we can observe in the background the cluster failing over. Now this is in real time. We can actually see the uh, ping request timing out. Okay, the ping is now responding and we can see the cluster resources are coming online now on SQL node 2. I can immediately launch SQL Management Studio again and authenticate against the same SQL cluster. Browse the databases folder, see my demo failover database, open up the tables and I can open up the columns and see the columns that I'd created earlier. I am going to speed up the next part of the video, um, which is really just starting up SQL node 1 again and waiting for the GeoCluster replicated disk to come back online to start replicating the data back from SQL node 2 to SQL node 1. It does take some time for Windows to start, for the cluster services to start, and the double take service to start. We can now see the GeoCluster disks are back online and the target status is OK. It is now possible to move the entire SQL server back from Node 2 to the Node 1, which has been brought back online again. This really concludes the demonstration of a single site, two node GeoCluster running SQL Server 2008. In the next video, I will attempt to create a active-active multi-site GeoCluster.